of the finest batsmen of all time. He could lead the attack with high quality fast medium bowling, or he could win a match with finger spin or wrist spin. He was a dazzling fielder in any position. The ultimate all-round player, Garfield Sobers, is one of ESPN's legends of cricket. Got them shorter one. It's up again. Four sixes in four balls. Swansea, Wales, 1968. Gary Sobers faces Glamorgan spinner Malcolm Nash. Oh, this is incredible. Now, this, 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 this is six on the trots, a world record. And he's done it! He's done it! And my goodness, it's gone way down to Swansea. It really was blistering stuff for him to hit six sixes it had never been achieved before in first class cricket uh, so it was pretty determined to make his mark in history and he achieved that uh, and it really is an indication of the way he played the game he always played with flair always played uh, trying to excite the crowd and there was no more exciting achievement than hitting six sixes in an over Sobers was a fearless aggressive batsman a powerful hitter with a textbook technique. Gary Sabres, as a batsman, it's hard to describe him. He, he, his whole defence was attack, I suppose you can nearly say. Um, and it was, and, his, and of course his straight range was, was so phenomenal. Um, you know, he could hook, he could pull. Um, you know, he, he had an array of shots, an array of shots which, which normal batsmen don't have. And, and of course, with this incredible eye and the fastest hands, the best hands I've ever seen um, on a batsman, uh, made him sort of something special. His feet and his head were usually in the right spot. And as a reader of length, he was a guy who went back and forward when he was supposed to. So technically he was very, very good. And that was married to a, a hitting ability, which was you know, exceptional. Oh, best ever. I, best thing in two legs. I, I think he's the best thing since sliced bread. And this guy is just tremendous. I mean, you, 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 you were in awe of him. As a bowler, Sobers was extraordinarily versatile. He came into test cricket as a spinner, but he became a skillful exponent of swing and seam. He started his career as a left arm spinner. He could also bowl left arm googlies. And when he put his mind to it, he was an exceptionally quick and late swinging left arm seamer. He was, he was the complete package. And for that reason, he's got to be the greatest all round cricketer there's ever been and quite possibly the greatest cricketer. He bowls quick, he bowls spin, you know, and you're back of the arm stuff, orthodox left arm stuff. Um, yes, Gary Sobers was probably one, one in a million. He was a genius. He could do everything. He could bat, he could bowl, he could uh, field. Uh, and he, even when bowling, he could bowl spin, he could bowl uh, quick, he could bowl swing, he could bowl back of the hand, uh, Chinaman stuff. He was, he was uh, the complete cricketer. And I dare say that uh, if he was uh, asked to keep wickets, he would have done a very good job with that as well. In the field, Sobers could take blinding catches close to the bat and fire in searing returns from the deep. Sabres took a catch in the, the tied test on the last day to dismiss Neil Harvey. And it was a wonderful catch because it was off Wes Hall, who was very, very quick. But not only did he dive sideways, but he also had to dive forward to catch it. And if you can imagine how hard a skill that is, I mean, and very, very few slip fielders, you always see slip field catches dropping short of people. It's very hard to dive forward and sideways at the same time. But um, Sabres had that goalkeeping skill to be able to do that. And, and take the great catches. And similarly, in short leg, he could cover great distances when he fielded in close, especially, uh, he made a bit of an art form of fielding in close to um, Lance Gibbs's bowling. Lance Gibbs, of course, was a great off-spin bowler, and Sobers around the corner um, was absolutely magnificent, snapping up balls which were a couple of inches off the ground. Gibbs would say that Sobers anticipation at that short leg position was something uh, incredible, that um, as the batsman was playing the shot, Sobers knew exactly where the ball was going to come and the anticipation was there and Sobers would inevitably take the catch. 
Really, he was a complete all-rounder because he, he'd take the new ball, a lively pace, I mean lively, swing it around, and then on, but, you know, you saw us with a bowl, come back, you know, good slip fielder, close fielder, and then I'll oh, just come and bowl you some of these now, some Chinamen and Googlies, uh, and did it well. And then as a batsman, well, magnificent, wasn't he? Sobers give visual proof of his reputation as one of the great batsmen in the world today. Like so many young West Indians, Gary Sobers, born in Barbados, developed his cricket on the beach. Up to today, cricket is still being played in Barbados, and it's played by some of the boys that I played with. Didn't matter what age you were, you still went and played beach cricket. And you went down there with your own bat, and it was like playing firms, what we used to call firms, who got the ball, they balled it, who took the catch, they batted. And it was first bunks. You caught the ball first bounce, you bat it. Sobers continued his cricket education by moving from the beach into club cricket. In Barbados, we had two leagues. The BCA, which was the Barbados Cricket Association, that is the higher class of cricket. And then you had the BCL, which was the Barbados Cricket League. And that was where players like myself and probably and, uh, Conward Hand and Claremont de Pisa, Everton Weeks, and then we went through the ranks there, we played our trials and then played for Barbados and into the West Indies team. Sobers played his first test match in 1954 at 17 years of age. In his initial 22 completed innings, he made double figures 18 times without ever reaching 70. It took Sobers four years to post his first century, but it was worth the wait. Against Pakistan in Kingston in early 1958, he played one of cricket's most famous innings, a world record 365 not out. It was such a massive innings, it remained the world record for 36 years until Brian Lara, a fellow West Indian, happily broke it and uh, Sobers was there on the boundary's edge to greet Lara when he finally surpassed such a massive milestone. And um, like, uh, like uh, Sobers, like Lara, they were both pretty young when they, when they achieved the feat. I mean, Sobers was only 21. He was uh, a total whippersnapper. And it really surprised people because he'd actually been picked for his bowling. Between 1958 and 1960, Gary Sobers made nine test match centuries and averaged more than 90. In a sequence of 10 innings against India and Pakistan, he made six centuries. Although his cricket fortunes were high, Sobers encountered a life-changing tragedy in September 1959. A car he was driving was involved in a collision that claimed the life of his passenger, close friend and West Indian teammate, Collie Smith. Sobers was devastated. The impact that must have had on Sobers, Smith was his best friend, or certainly his best friend in cricket. Uh, Smith, a lot of people have suggested, would have made a, a great West Indian captain. He was an all-rounder of, you know, obviously of a, a lot of ability. Uh, he was something of a protege of Worrell, being from Jamaica, where Worrell was, had been based. And um, the effect it had on Sobers was to, Sobers then basically took the attitude that life is for living. Day by day, who knows what will happen tomorrow. And he became something of a reckless character. The now famous 1960-61 tour of Australia was to prove critical to Sober's well-being and to his future in cricket. The immediate effect it had on Sober's really was to persuade him not to, um, not to care too much anymore. He wanted to enjoy everything about his life. He partied hard, he drank hard, he played hard. And it, in many ways, it possibly per persuaded him to carry on being a great cricketer, having just broken the world record age 21. He didn't stop, he carried on being arguably the greatest cricketer, all-round cricketer there's ever been. This sizzling straight drive takes the score past the hundred, and even Benno has to afford the brilliance of Garfield Sobers. Once more a boundary... Sobers made 132 on the first day of the series in Brisbane. The tour gave West Indian cricket an enormous boost, and it proved to be a personal blessing for Sobers. Find the bowler now to feel the might of this 24-year-old batsman who has just scored his 10th hundred in test cricket. That hundred he scored in the Tide Test is easily the best test hundred I've ever seen because he didn't just beat the field, he bisected the field. He just played some of the most incredible shots 
and, and his timing and, and when Gary was going, basically there was nothing you could do about it. At the end of the tour, Sir Donald Bradman invited Sobers to play for South Australia in the Sheffield Shield competition. The Don thought that it would be nice to have some of the players that took part in that series come back to Australia. And he wanted me to come and play for South Australia. And I really had looked forward to coming back and playing in the domestic season over here because I knew that it would have um, helped to improve my outlook on the game and my cricket in general. And it did. Sobers topped both the batting and bowling averages for the season. In his final match, he made 251 and took six for 72. For the next decade, he would reign undisputed as the world's best all-round cricketer. Well, I've always said Gary Sobers was not only a great batsman, he was a great, or he is a great human being. It was mostly a magnificent experience batting down the other end to Gary. The only problem was he was such a hard hitter of the ball and such a straight driver, you had to really be on your toes at the other end because he hit a lot of balls hard straight back down the pitch. And you, you know, one, you had to make sure that you were quickly back in your crease so that you didn't get run out off the bowler's hands or get collected with one. In 1963, Gary Sobers became only the second man after Keith Miller to make 300 runs and take 20 wickets in a test series. He would repeat the effort three years later, again in England, and he remains the only player to have achieved that double twice. Gary Sobers was the man. Um, in the 60s when I was born and early 70s, everyone aspired to be a Gary Sobers because he it means if you were so you were always involved. He was the main batsman, he was a quality bowler, and he was a high-class fieldsman. So he was the man that really inspired me. Gary Sobers was certainly the best cricketer I ever played against. You know, he was four players rolled into one. You know, he's a great batsman, great fieldsman. Uh, probably five players rolled into one because he could bowl left-handed Chinaman's left arm or left-hand orthodox. He could also bowl quickly could take the new ball. He was just a magic player. Look, if he was around today, he'd be an absolute sensation. In 1966, Sobers, now captain, led the West Indies to a 3-1 series victory over England. He made 722 runs, including three centuries, and averaged over 103. He also took 20 wickets, held 11 catches, and won all five tosses. In 1966, he dominated that series. If you look at his figures with bat and ball, and his catching round the corner to Lance Gibbs, uh, or wherever he was fielding, he, he was a wonderful, wonderful natural cricketer. West Indies at Lords in 19, 1966 were 90-odd for five in their second innings. The lead then was about nine, so they were in real trouble. All the main batsmen had gone, and David Holford, who was his first cousin, uh, all-rounder, playing in only a second test match, very inexperienced, comes in. Lords big crowd and West Indies in trouble, England on top and first couple of deliveries Sobers could see that Holford was a bit nervous and he came down the pitch and said what's the problem? He said look this is just like Spartan which is a club team back home. The bowling is no better than the club bowlers we have at home. Look at the conditions, look at the pitch, just play as if you're playing club cricket at home and that relaxed uh, Holford right away and this is the way Sobers played cricket, test cricket, club cricket. Division one cricket, first class cricket, didn't matter to him. He played it as if it was just a game. And uh, he was so relaxed, had, had no nerves, whatever. Sobers was accused of reckless captaincy in early 1968, when he set England a target of just 215 runs to win the fourth test. Gary went in and he'd made an amazing declaration. And I think he'd left England to get uh, 215 in 165 minutes. Well, that's asking for a lot. And I think Colin Cowley wasn't inclined to go for it. But boycott of all people was. In there went and England won the match. And of course, in the West Indies, uh, Gary was nearly horn, hung, drawn and quartered for this. But he said he threw the match away. Well, he didn't throw the match away. England won it. But he made a sporting gesture to keep the game alive and to keep cricket alive. And I think that was, that was, a, that was part of, of Sobers. He just loved the game. Sobers responded in the fifth test, 
with another stirring all-round performance. He made 152 and 95 not out and bowled 68 overs for six wickets. But England held on and the series was lost. A lot of people will have different views about Sir, Gar Sir Garfield Sobers as a captain because of the fact that Sir Garfield Sobers pretty much gamble a lot on his captaincy. In that Sir Garfield Sobers would make declarations that other people, more conservative captains wouldn't make. Because Sir Garfield Sobers knew his ability and perhaps he thought others had his ability as well within the team. The final six years of Sober's test career were characterized somewhat by criticism and controversy. Gary Sobers may not be considered by many to have been the greatest captain of all time, but I can tell you that in my experience, every single thing he did, he did in the best interest of the game. He was always trying to win. He always tried to score his runs fast. He always tried to get wickets when he was bowling. He never thought about averages in, uh, in any aspect of his game. And then, to be able to sit with him uh, at the end of the day was just a privilege. After passing 7,000 career runs at home against India, Sobers joined the rest of the world team to tour Australia. In the third match, he made 254, an innings Don Bradman described as the finest he'd ever seen. And some of the shots he played off Dennis Lilly in that game were just unbelievable. Especially the straight drives, they were just going, Dennis hadn't even followed his, got through his follow through and it went back past him. And I remember when I was in the second inning and Australia was really on top and we needed two players to consolidate and to get runs so that we couldn't get back into the game. So I had to put my head down and back. And I went on the first over, Dennis was bowling again. And the first over, the first few balls hit the middle of the bat. And I knew that once the first few hit the middle of the bat, I knew it was going to be in for a good day. And I, I, I started to play and Dennis got more heated up and started to bowl shorter and shorter. And I started to get really on top of him. I started to see the ball bigger and bigger and everything started to flow. And it was one of those days where you could do nothing wrong. And I thought that was a tremendous innings. I mean, it, it was just poetry in motion. This guy was, this guy was something else. I don't, I'm, I, I'm not so sure we'll see um, someone like him again. I hope we do, but it will be, and that will be some player. <laughs> Sobers retired in 1974 after a home series against England in which he became the first man to make 8,000 test match runs. Renowned for his relaxed enjoyment of the game, he was knighted for his services to cricket in 1975. Sir Garfield Sobers to me is the greatest all-round cricketer that's ever lived. If there's been one better, I would have loved to have seen him play. He was three cricketers rolled into one. He, he opened the ball in with a new ball. He, he could come on with this Chinaman and Googlers. And he also was a brilliant fielder close to the wicket. And of course, and, uh, uh, what a great, great batsman he was. Uh, and on top of all that, he was a gentleman. He had this great gift. Well, not, not only was Sobers the greatest all-round cricketer that's ever lived, I think that he's the greatest athlete that's ever lived. Gary Sobers will get my last penny. He, 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 he just didn't, money was, you know, it came and it went, you know, and um, he was very generous to a lot of people, and especially to myself and the younger guys who came into the leagues when he was still playing. And Saturday night was a big night. Sit down, we'd sit down, play dominoes, we have a meal, we drank. Um, and listen to stories again about, about with Gary. He, but he was, he was just such a, a generous man. Sir Garfield Sobers played in 93 test matches. He made 8,032 runs at an average of 57.78. He made 26 centuries. He took 235 wickets at an average of 34.03 and took 109 catches. Well, Sir Garfield, I mean, again, what can you say? I mean, uh, the greatest all-rounder the West Indies have ever had. Is he the greatest all-rounder that ever played? If you talk about ability, natural ability, what he did, 
people will say he was the best all-rounder. People you talk to, it's very, very sort of uh, split. But if you talk about genuine all-rounders, he was a genuine all-rounder. And because of what he was able to do, he would bat, he could open, he would bat six. But he started off bowling left arm spin, then decided he was going to bowl left arm seam, and then decided it'd be fun to bowl left arm Chinaman or googly. And that was the talent of the man, the awesome cricketer that he was. So Garfield Tobers is the best batsman I ever saw. You know, forget about all the other things he could do in cricket. Um, Sir Garfield was a magnificent batsman. And I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to play with him uh, quite a bit as a very young cricketer. There is no doubt in my mind that Gary Sobers was the greatest cricketer that's ever lived. Uh, you can't do what he did with the bat and with the ball in the fast department, as well as with orthodox spin and with wrist spin and then catch the ball the way he did, close to the wicket, and indeed in the covers, and throw the ball the way he did without being an absolute genius. So for me, uh, if you said, what would you like to be? I would every day be a Gary Sobers. Sheer, bubbling, natural genius. Um, the greatest born cricketer probably of them all. Um, he could do anything. No, no argument about it. He was the greatest all-round cricketer in the world, certainly almost a freak, really, that uh, he was put here. I, I'm, I'm of the firm belief that people are put here to do certain things, like Pele to play football and Muhammad Ali to box. And Sobers was put here to play cricket. And to, he played it magnificently. He was a tremendous sportsman. He enjoyed life to the fullest, and yet it had no effect on his cricket. Perhaps it had a, a beneficial effect on his cricket. Um, he, he just went out there and was very relaxed, relaxed in everything he did, no matter what the situation, he could do anything on a cricket field and I haven't seen anyone since and I don't think there's anyone before him uh, who would compare. He was exhilarating to watch. He could turn a match at any time with bat or ball or with a spectacular catch. He was an aggressive, fearless player and a daring, imaginative captain. There's never been a more complete player than Sir Garfield Sobers, a giant in the ranks of ESPN's Legends of Cricket.